Hi everybody, it's Andrea Mercy, aka Anloam, and welcome to my studio. Today is a very special day because I'm going to be doing the Creative Arts Collaboration hashtag event for November 2015, which is hashtag thankful for art. So the theme this month is thanks. So November is the American Thanksgiving, and there's also Remembrance slash Veterans Day, and you know, before the holidays, Christmas coming up, we're supposed to reflect on being thankful for things in our lives. So that's what this month is all about. So come back and join me and we're going to do a great piece of art to commemorate this particular hashtag. Okay, so for the hashtag event for this month, um, I'm going to repurpose a an old piece that was an experiment in school. So basically, this is about this is a piece of masonite. It's nine by twelve. I have about two hundred layers of glaze on this. So basically, I started out with yellow glaze, and then I eventually worked my way up uh, by adding red darker and darker and darker until it got all dark up here. And then when I was moving last year, it adhered to a piece of paper. And I tried, you can see that the gloss is coming off in some places because I took a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and I tried to remove it and it just removed of the finish on it. But I do want to use this for as the base for my piece of art. So I'm going to take some sanding paper and I'm going to sand that down, uh, which isn't bad because there's 200 layers, right? So it's it's not, uh, it's not gonna take away all of the color, but it'll take off at least two layers. Get this all nice and smooth. Then I'm going to put a protective coat on it and then we'll do the piece of art on top of it. But I wanted you to see how I was gonna fix this um, and when I fix it, I will also teach you how to glaze because I'm going to make up some more red uh, when I make my glaze. So I'll cover it once to protect everything. And then I'm actually going to darken this part at the top even more. So it's super duper red, almost close to black. So here we go, the sanding part, which is uh, no fun. Let me, uh, let me zoom in here. Woo. so that you can see. I think that's as good as that's going to get. Oh my. All right. Let's see. This one is my, my grit grit. My heavy duty grit. Oh, that's coming off way easier than I thought it was. Yay! <laughs> Again, it was just adhered to the top layer. That's awesome. Okay, good. I feel good about that. I guess we don't need to zoom in that much then. Because that's done. Well, it's almost done. Got a little bit more to do here. I had put so many layers on the edges started to uh, bubble over. Well, I'm very happy about this. I thought that was going to be a really difficult exercise. Now here, I don't know if you can see it, you probably can't, but it's actually taking off some of the red back down to the orange. So there we go. 
And since I'm cleaning this up, I think I'm gonna try and take that line out. It's been there for three years driving me nuts. Since I'm sanding it down anyways. Okay, which one is the this one is? Okay, the ridge is gone. Well, I might as well just sand the whole thing down nice and smooth and start from scratch, right? So the other reason why I'm showing this to you is if you have a piece that you don't like, it doesn't mean you have to throw it out. You can, in the case of a canvas, actually in the case of anything, you can just gesso over it and start from scratch. Artist supplies are expensive enough as it is without throwing stuff out. Oh, there we go. Nice and clean. See all that dust? That's what came off. So there we go. I want you to know that you can repurpose a piece of art. Like this is just an experiment. I never I never thought I was going to do anything with it, but masonite isn't cheap. See, you can see where it's stuck to the paper. Yeah. And uh, so I, we will re-gloss this and re-glaze it, and it will be fabulous for the background for my piece for this month's hashtag event. We'll be back. So the piece that I want to do is going to be somewhat like this. This is called Gatno Glade, and basically it's in the background, all this is in the sun, but you're standing in the shadows looking out. So I'm going to do that same effect with this one, where the foreground is going to be black looking out into a glade that has color and this color so it's going to be it's going to be at sunset so a lot of this is going to be fast forwarded for a couple of reasons one when i do glaze i use my handy dandy hair dryer i have a hair dryer and a hair dryer stand and it runs the entire time blowing hot air on it so it dries as i go so i can put lots and lots of coats down at the same time so I would not be able to speak over that without screaming, and that's kind of rude. So that, and there's going to be a lot of glaze. It, when I put down these original 200, it took me an entire afternoon. I had the, the hair dryer going beside me, and I would just slop on a glaze, and as soon as it was, as it was dry, I'd do the next one. It's a very watery glaze, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Let's just put that aside for a second. So I just have a little bit of water in here, probably two tablespoons of water, just a little bit of water. I'm going to add the gloss polymer, which is from school. I don't have any glazing medium. Um, you, could, you could use uh, this here too, you could use the gloss medium. Anything that's going to harden into a... Um, a hard coating. I was taught to use it with this. I've used it with all of the other ones as well. But I'm going to use this. So you're going to put in, it's kind of like a recipe. Yeah. 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 Tablespoon of that. I've got some reds out. Let's mix that up. So you want it to be, oops fairly watery so that it dries really quick and it goes on really smooth. You don't want any ridges because then you'd have to sand in between them. But even on this one you can see where I sanded, see in the light, you can see where there was some ridging because after you put on so many coats you do get some ridging, which is okay. Again, you can just sand it um, and then put your final gloss coat on. Whoop. I just shot that across one of my house. All right. 
Now, the hardest part is to get the proper red. And I'm thinking this is Windsor Newton, which is like the best paint I have. And it is a nice, actually, I'll be able to zoom in here to be quite close since it's quite a small piece. So this is quite a red red. So there's that. There's, I've got red red. Then I have a crimson, which is like a blood red. So that, that's not right. Then there's Rubine Red, which is a blue red. We talked about that before, the difference between a, the bright red, which is an orange red, and the Rubine Red, which is kind of a blue red. And I like that one. And then there was Carmine Red, which I kind of find it to be, he is a little bit orangey. And I want this to darken up where I might actually put purple at the top. So let's get rid of the orangey one. And this one's kind of orangey too. Let's get rid of that one. The hardest part sometimes. Of course, I'm trying to match the glaze that's already there. And do you think I can remember what it is? No. Okay, so we're going to put in... A, tea, a teaspoon and a half. Let's see how that works. I wanted you to see how I make the glaze. I think it's important that you know how it's done, not just how to apply it. It's, it'd be nice for you to be able to play at home with some colors and some mediums, knowing that, you know, you can't really go wrong. I know that this looks milky, but when it dries, it dries clear. So, I remember when I was putting it on the first time, I said, oh my god, this looks like strawberry milk. It's going to be horrible. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of the alizarin crimson hue, um, which is like a blood red, so it's got that bluish purple in it. So I'm just going to put, this is, quite, this is my expensive paint. So we're just going to add a little bit of that in. Come on. There we go. All right. Let's stir this up and fast forward and see what we can get to. Okay. So... On camera, that looks like kind of a reddish pink. In person, it's almost like a cherry pink, which is which is hilarious. Now glazes are very very watery. They're not supposed to be. Thick. They're supposed to be really thin. And it's the addition of many, 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 many coats that creates the effect. So this is basically what I'm going to be doing the entire video. Is I'm going to be taking a little bit of glaze, going on. I'm going to try not to go past here. It's okay if I'm if I smish it up because it can be um, it can be sanded. But basically what I want to be doing is keeping the red up near the top. Alright, let me just tilt this. So you can see that it's a little bit wet there. A little bit wet. We're not going to worry about this down here right now. Um, that's not my priority. My priority is to get this red, really, really red. So it's now back to the orange it was. And I'm going to just start very, very liberally applying. Not where the paint is. So that's the paint that didn't get mixed up. But just very liberally applying the red up near the top. And I'm going to keep the dryer going. 
and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to speed it up really fast because obviously this is going to be really boring. Um, but I do want you to see how many layers it takes. So I'll probably speed it up to usually uh, when I'm doing my videos, I do uh, times four. And then in the gate video, I had done it at times eight just because it was taking me so long in between things. But I think I'll go like times 16 or something and just like really zoom it or. I don't know because I just I think that you would be really bored with this. But that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna plug in my machine. And we're gonna get started. Alright, hair dryer. Oops, let me go away. My hair dryer going. Strap it into the folder, which is awesome because that means it's hands free. Put it on hot and put it on high. And there we go. Hi everybody, I'm back. So it's two days after I blew up my hair dryer. So valuable lessons, even though you have a power strip and even though you have a brand new electrical panel, um, you shouldn't plug in a hair dryer and a heat gun and use both of them at the same time because it went And then, so when I got everything back on, the video was sitting inside my webcam and it wouldn't it wouldn't save it kept saying I had zero minutes even though I had like uh, I don't know how many minutes I had at any rate I uh, couldn't get it to save so I couldn't import it into my movie maker and I was losing my mind so I had to go and get some other software that um, plays or records whatever's on your desktop. So I got that. Um, it's called Debut Video Capture. And then I was able to play the video from my webcam on my desktop and tape it. So I'm actually videoing a video. So that's why the, um, the quality of the last section wasn't very good. So my apologies for that. I've learned. So this is the glaze. I had popped a lid on it to save it so that it wouldn't uh, harden up on me uh, and we're gonna continue so this is what it looks like right now you can see that I've gotten the shine back to it from the glaze um, I'm, I don't really like this transition down here but I'm not gonna worry about it right now what I'm gonna do is after I've done all the red and the purple I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna do several coats of yellow over at the bottom here and see if I can blend it back out a bit which isn't a huge deal because this is where the the landscape is going to go, so I'm only going to catch a little bit of this anyways, I believe. All right, here we go. So turning on my dryer, and we're going to keep going. Oops, hot. Hot and high. Where's that button?
Okay, let me just put this one last little. I want one nice thin coat here. Just gonna move this a little bit. Do the edge. All right. Oh, pick this up. So I'm gonna darken this glaze now. I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to it and darken it and then I'm just gonna do this part here. Oh, you can't see that, sorry. I'm gonna just do this part here. And oh, there we go. So the interesting thing about glazes is if you make nice thin layers of glaze and you take your time, you can create some super duper cool effects with your work. Um, because you can, like down here, oh, sorry, here was yellow, and then I never actually added an orange glaze. I had done yellow, and then I started with the red, and because it was such a thin um, glaze, like this glaze is actually quite, quite dark. I believe the first time I did this, it was much more, there was much more polymer and water in it. So it was actually more translucent and that's why I got this lovely orange here and then this one is a little bit darker. Now you can also see, if you see here, see how the ridging is very minimal with, the, the, with that particular type of brush and the loose glaze. So what will happen is, is that um, after I put that purple up there, which I think is going to look super cool. Um, I will give everything a quick light sanding and then put a clear coat on it and then do my work. So I'll probably put a coat of the, um, the Liquitex gloss medium and burnish. Just, I might even water it down a little bit and just slap that a couple of coats of that on, uh, with the dryer. And then that'll be completely protected so that when I do my work on top of it, if for any reason I don't like it or I make a mistake, I can wipe it back. Or if it dries, I can even sand it a little bit. All right. So here's my glaze. I want to add, I'm going to add some dioxin purple. Or am I going to add this one? Let's see here. This one is, ooh, that's a very deep purple. That's kind of reddish. The dioxin purple is very bluish. So I'm actually going to end up adding the violet, the quinoquidone blue violet. It is a heavy body paint. I am not going to add very much like a half inch dab. And again, this is my very expensive paint. So let me get something to mix that in with. Here we go. Let me move this out of the way. I don't want to splash. So I'm going to take that down here and I'm going to darken this glaze. And that's and you that's how you start too, right? So let's say hypothetically you wanted to do this kind of a sunset effect. You would start with yellow glaze. And then you could add a little bit of a of a yellowy orange, darken it to orange, do a couple of glazes, then darken it with a red, and then you know, darken it with a blue, and then darken it with a purple. I mean, that's how you can do it. And so that you don't have to make a whole bunch of batches of glaze, unless of course you're gonna do a whole bunch and then you make containers like this, put the lid on it and it will stay. As long as it's airtight, you should be able to have your glazes and paints, I don't wanna say forever because eventually the air will infiltrate, but like months, you can have your glazes for months. So if you're just doing an experiment for several months, uh, and you want to have the same glazes all the time, make up a bunch of Tupperware containers of the glazes 
or the paints or the whatevers and just keep them protected, covered with your Tupperware and you can always have the same colors for your experiments or if you were doing um, a series of paintings or a set, a triptych or something like that, you would always have the color matches. There we go. So that's not hugely darker, but it is going to be significantly darker just when we start putting on all the layers because layer after layer after layer will get darker. I don't even know if you can see, but to me, to the naked eye, this is definitely has more blue. So we'll move this back here. And we'll turn on my dryer again and we'll go. Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed. Do you see how the color isn't wasn't taking over here? It's because I was I was always pulling the same way. So the color was being deposited over there and by the time I got over here, it wasn't it wasn't depositing. So I was getting color over here and not over here. Not that it makes a difference because it is a sunset and there's clouds and stuff like that. So I'm going to work on just kind of darkening up this area over here. I'm actually going to add a little bit more purple to this to see if I can um, get it to darken more quickly. But you can see here it's darkening right around the edge and it darkened over here where the color was pulling, which is good. And then because I was getting over here, that's why I started wiping it back the other way and it started to darken up, but just not quickly enough. So. I did kind of forget to tell you that, that the pigment is suspended in the polymer and in the water. So when you lay it down, it lays down here and then because a lot of this is, is the clear polymer, right? So we have to, um, and the water, so we have to make sure that you, you pull from both sides. I had, I had forgotten that. But it became very apparent very quickly. I was like, why isn't it laying down color? Oh yeah, that's right, because I'm leaving all the pigment on one on one side. So that is a lesson learned. So I'm going to darken this a little bit with uh, that purple again. The quinacridone blue violet, just a tad. Just like, like that much. Just a little bit. And I know that you probably saw that sometimes I would put it down and there would still be like a little chunk of paint and then I'd quickly spread the paint out. That's that's perfectly fine. Um, obviously it would be better if... See, my, my glaze is starting to thicken up a bit. I think I'm going to add um, a little bit of water. There we go, that's better. Because of course the brush picks up the water more easily than it picks up the paint when it's suspended like that in, in polymer. Oops. It also splattered a little bit, but again, it's not going to matter when I'm done my project because you won't see lots of it because there's going to be lots in black. 
So there we go. A little bit darker. I'm actually going to give this one nice smooth coat and not have the dryer on. I'm going to actually let this dry into one nice smooth coat. So I'll turn the camera off. I just want to give the glaze a chance to self level because where it pulls sometimes where it starts to dry before I get a chance to put the next layer on and then it pulls. I'm just going to do that and see if I can get it to nicely self level without the dryer on it. There we go. Whoops. Look at that. Because you can see in the light, I'm going to put my lid on there. You can see in the light how it's starting to get oh, a little bit of ridges. And I mean, that's not a bad thing, but that's part of um, my process. Like, if you were doing this correctly, I hate to say that correctly, but if you were doing this for a mirror smooth finish, you would not be able to use the dryer at the same time you were putting down. You'd have to lay down a layer, dry it, lay down another layer so it would stay mirror smooth. And I mean, that would be awesome, but certainly not necessary for me because I know that I can do a quick sanding and, and do another gloss. So I'm gonna just leave that, turn the camera off and come back after that's naturally dried and we'll keep going. We'll darken up this corner here and then uh, we'll give it a little bit of a sanding and a gloss and then we'll actually start the piece of art on top of it. I'll see you soon. So I let this dry naturally and uh, there was a little bit of ridges so I actually did take some sandpaper to it just to uh, just to smooth it out a bit. So you can see it took off a little bit of the red there. Um, but that's okay. Well, there's a little spot there, splatter. So basically I just wanted to even it out a little bit before we start with some more glazing. Edges. There you go. Damp sponge, take off all the dust. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the dust. There we go. Turn it back around this way. So here is where the dark wasn't sticking. So pulling, pulling too much, too quickly. So actually, I kind of thought this looked like a really neat cloud design. So I'm, uh, I'm going to do some more dark there and then I might highlight underneath uh, to make it look like the lights reflecting off of it but I wanted to darken this significantly up here. I don't, I don't care one way or another if this darkens up anymore because it kind of looks like clouds and I think it kind of looks cool. So I've got my handy dandy hair dryer again. And I've got my glaze that I had covered up. There we go. My brush. And we're ready to go again. I'm going to just uh, try my heat gun here and see if that will dry it faster, even if I have to not have the hands free. Okay, turn the dryer off first. There we go.
Okay, so you can see here that it is darkening up significantly over here, which I kind of like that it's because it looks like the sun is setting over here. Um, so I'm actually going to darken this a little bit more. I need a baby wipe to clean up my mess. All this glaze that falls over the edge. Okay, just pick that up a little bit so I'm not... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is a blue gray. Um, I like to use it instead of black sometimes for shadowing um, clouds and stuff like that. It's dark, but it's got this bluish tinge to it. I'm just going to put like a just a dab, just a dab. There we go. Just to gray that up a bit without making it yucky. And then, and that's starting to get thick again. And it, it will do that because it's exposed to the air. And with the heat gun and the dryer and everything, it can. Um, start to thicken and that's when it really starts to pull like it's pulling right here in the corner I mean I'm not worried about it right now uh, again because I can sand a little bit of water there. so that grated I don't even know if you can tell in the camera but that will just put a little bit more blue into the red Ooh, that's still wet here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little coat of this on. So start at the edge, work my way into a nice cloud-like consistency here, shape, outline. Just going to put a nice liberal layer on there and I'm going to let this dry naturally. So I'm going to be turning off the camera again. I know that this sounds like a really long process because I have to keep turning off the camera and stuff like that. However, I want A, good results, and B, in the old days, when you glazed, like with oil paints, you would glaze and then you'd have to let it sit for weeks in between layers of glaze. Um, which is one of the reasons why I like acrylics. I've never, I've never worked in oils. To me, they just sound really messy, hard to clean up, and and um, it just takes forever. I'm an extremely impatient person, so I'm actually going to let that dry naturally. Let's see if you can tell there what you think. So this corner has darkened significantly with those layers, and then I'm going to really darken that little bit up there. And then I'm going to come and we're going to do the yellow down here to brighten this part up over here. Now that I've decided the sun's going to be more over here and my hill is going to be over here, I'm going to severely lighten this up with some bright yellow. I might even sand that down a little bit. All right, we're getting there slowly but surely. It's going to be another long video. <laughs> Sorry in advance for that. Okay, so this has dried naturally for a day and you can see where I because I had sanded where I just put that one quick glaze job one quick swipe with the glaze um, this part here not super duper happy with but I've decided I'm going to ignore it for now and flip this over oops, this way and just put yellow glaze down. Um, and then I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna come back here and just super duper darken this up with some more Payne's Gray to make it look like a cloud formation because eventually there's gonna be a tree here like this one. I'm gonna do this. So um, it's not super critical that that is perfect, but I'm going to go with the yellow glaze right now. So I mixed up some yellow gray glaze, same recipe as I did for the red. 
I used lemon yellow and I used a little bit of bright yellow. Same uh, polymer and water made a really sloppy glaze. So this of course will be fast forwarded because I'm going to be plugging in my hair dryer. Alright, let's get that going. It's on hot and... All right, so just so that you can see this, let me clean up the edges here. It's one thing with dealing with glaze is that it's a little bit messy. So right here, you can see where it started. The same thing as up here, it started to pull, uh, which is fine because again, it kind of looks cloudy, so I'm not worried about it too much. I'm gonna take my heat gun and completely dry this. And then I'm gonna put one coat one coat down and let that dry naturally and I'm going to give it uh, a quick sanding and I think then we're going to be ready to actually do the piece of art on top of this I'm not I'm I'm really not going to worry about this right now I think I'm going to see where the trees end up and where that background ends up first before I start worrying about stuff like that all right so here's my hands doing the baby tape. clean up the liquid part of this so you're going to see me dry this and then you're going to see me put one more coat naturally down and then that'll be that where's my heat gun I believe I'd have to go back and look at the other pictures, but I really believe that these these yellow glazes have <clears throat> brightened up the bottom a little bit, which is what I wanted, just a little bit. With glazes, it's hard to change the color. Um, like, you can't lighten with glaze. Well, I suppose you could, but you'd have to have a pretty opaque glaze. And generally, when you thin it, it makes it more translucent, but I suppose you could. It's a very opaque white glaze. You could add highlights to it, but generally that's not what you're trying to do with glaze. You're trying to add depth of color by creating kind of like, well, if you're as old as I am, I remember candy apple red cars, car paint, and you got that by having tons and tons of layers of a translucent car paint and then it was like the side of the car you could put your hand into it because it was such a mirror finish with so much depth all right so that's pretty much what i'm trying to accomplish here is create lots of luminescent depth with lots of thin coats here we are so I'm going to cover my glaze because I'm never going to use all of this glaze for this project but I will now have yellow and red glaze for another project. So let's lay that out here, clean up the edge a little bit, we're going to let that dry and when we come and I'll, I'll off camera I'll give it a sanding. And then um, I'll give it one clear coat of protection off camera again. I don't, you've seen me do that before. I don't think you need to see me do that again. And then we will 
be back to actually start putting down the art part and I will come back at a later time and do a video just on glazing from the from the very beginning we'll start with a white canvas and we'll we'll build it'll just be a small one and then we'll build on it all right I'll see you later okay so I did what I said I was gonna do I sanded and then I put on a coat of gloss so there you go gloss medium and now to get to the art and it's only taking me 48 minutes to get to that part I'm really sorry my videos are so long I one of the goals for me is to not only show you how I make a specific piece of art which is you know part of it but the techniques that go along with it and everything and and I feel like I could have cut that whole part out about how to make the glazing because I am doing another video but I don't know I think it's important that you see the process as it goes I mean you're you're more than welcome to fast forward through the, the, the those parts um, I just I would feel that the video is incomplete if I was just, you know, here, and then you don't understand at each stage, like, what I'm doing. So that's my philosophy. <laughs> no good, bad, right, wrong, and that's just the way it is. So I, I can draw. I don't enjoy drawing, per se. Um... It's just, I, ha I took life drawing in, in school and I could, I mean, I had a B or B plus or something like that. Maybe even an A minus, I can't remember. I mean, I can do it. Absolutely. Um, do I enjoy doing it? Nah, not so much. Um, I used to when I was a kid. I used to enjoy it a lot. But, um, like, I'm no good at portraiture, like forget that I'm, I'm pretty good at perspective I enjoy doing perspective I like the ruler that might be the anal part of me I don't know I'm just trying so I, the, the point is is I can't draw so I know what I want to do um, so I just went and cut out a bunch of clip arts and my objective is to just kind of set out what I want to do and then I'm going to do my transfer technique just to put it down and then I'm going to use paint on top of it to refine it because it's not just going to be black I, like I'm going to do a tree and, and stuff like that but when it comes to the things that I'm supposed to be doing so I had wanted to um, I know there's going to be a tree there so I kind of wanted something like that and then but this would be higher this would be higher up here I think and then like that and then I wanted Oops. I'm sure you can guess at what my theme is going to be. And as I said, I can't draw it all. This is a free clip art. Um, I tend to respect, I mean, this is from Shutter, but it was just so I could get the shape. Um, this was from a free clip art place. And basically what I want to do is I want to lean that up against there and then there'll be a tree up here and then I have which you probably can't see very well but reverse in reverse letters so that I'll be able to do my transfer technique I'm going to say thank you obviously this is a thank you to veterans and that's what I think about in November. I'm very fortunate. I only had one member of my family serve and um, he didn't serve in the Second World War. He served in the Korean War. 
So my grandfathers didn't serve. Uh, one was a police officer and stayed home, and the other one went to boot camp. But by the time he um, was going to be shipped off, the war ended. So I, I'm very fortunate that I didn't lose any immediate family members to any war. Um, I don't. I've only had one uncle serve in the military, I think. Yeah, so this generation, my generation, I don't have any recollection of an immediate family member going to war. And I certainly haven't lost anyone in war, but I have many friends and um, their families. I have friends that serve. I did. Uh, try to join the Navy when I was very young. I was going to be a boiler technician on a on a submarine. That's what I was signed up for. And then I met my first husband and that kind of went out the window. So I didn't actually serve, but I passed all the tests and everything before I was getting ready to go. At any rate, that's very convoluted for what I'm trying to say. I have not been directly impacted by the loss of a loved one to war. I completely respect people that serve their country and I have the utmost empathy for those that are left behind when they pass um, in battle. So that is going to be my thanks. So it's going to say thank you over here and actually I'm looking at that now and I'm thinking that black isn't going to show up really well there. I might reprint that in another color. Maybe in yellow. Okay, and then there's going to be a tree here. So this is pretty much what I want to do. And then I might come back later and do some um, some cloud highlights there. But I wanted to get this down. I wanted to... Now, should I just... You know what, I might just outline it with paint so that I don't have to do the transfer technique for these parts. Because these are very simple. Um, I cut these out just so that I'd be able to play with it before I decided to get ready to do that. I'm just going to pause the video and I'm going to make up some paint and then we'll come back. And what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm just going to draw around it and fill it in. And then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, I'm just going to move this up out of the way for a minute. Here's some of the brushes I'm going to be using. So fan brush. It's very obvious why it's called fan brush. I have this really super fine brush um, that I usually use for signing my name. And again, I didn't clean it properly and it's kind of gummed up at the end. So that's really irritated me a little bit because this is an expensive brush. And I have just a shader brush for the big areas. And this, I don't know if you can see that, this is called a rigger brush. It's got a really long, thin, um, and I'm going to use that for the branches of the tree. It's called a rigger brush or a rigging brush, depending on what part of the world you're from, because people who used to paint boats would paint the rigging with this because it would give them a, a thin line like a thread. And then I have this one too, which I'm going to probably use to do the outlining. Okay, so this has a little bit of water in it. I don't know if you can see that moving around. And I put some burnt umber and some carbon black in there. The burnt umber wouldn't be dark enough, um, but the black would be, funny enough, too black. I tend not to use black when I want dark colors. I tend to use a mixture of other colors to give me a black that has tones in it. So when I use pencil crayons, you'd use indigo and cadmium red or alizarin crimson and it would give you a really nice dark but it had like a bluish purple undertone and then um, in with paint I just tend to not use black it's very rare for me to actually use black but in this case I want to darken up the umber enough I just don't want it to be pure black or it kind of takes away from the painting because black is very flat so just mixing that up a little bit. I can always darken it. The problem with using black directly out of the tube is 
it's really hard to light in the black because you would have to put on a very opaque paint to cover up the black and it's just it's just easier not to go there it's just easier to go kind of a light black and then darken it up later I'm just adding a little bit more water there just so that this will mix a little bit better and I want it to be pretty thin for when I do the tree and the tree branches so as you can see there that is a really dark brown which will give me a good start and again when I do the um, the grass and the, and the trees and that it needs to be thin enough that I can use my fan brush and my rigger brush all right that is a start let's put that over there out of the way where I can't make a mess okay I'm going to take this one I'm going to need some water 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 and a handy dandy wipe so as I spoke about earlier in the video I put the, the gloss glaze on for a couple of reasons and one of the reasons was is in case I totally screw this up I can wipe it off with my handy dandy wipe all right so basically what I want to do right now is I just want to outline what I've set up here so I can remove the paper so There we go. There's my outline. So now I'm going to spend the next bunch of fast forwarding filling that in and starting to make the details. I'm not going to do the tree right away. My objective is just to fast forward through and show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the majority of it with uh, this shader brush and this shader brush. I just like it because it's got a an angle on it and I can get into the corners. All right so well I guess you know what I could probably I could um, zoom this in so that you can see what it is I'm doing. All right see you on the other side. Okay, so that's the first coat. Um, if you'll notice, um, the paint doesn't stick very well to the gloss medium, and I was expecting that. Um, you know, when you have that really super glossy surface, it's hard for the paint to stick, um, which is why when we started painting, we put gesso down because it has tooth. However, um, if you're persistent, as I am going to be, I'm gonna let this dry this will have a little bit of tooth in it and then I'll be able to put another coat on so the objective will be to put another coat of this black on 
and then see how it looks. And if it's still not dark enough, I will add some more carbon black to it and darken it up and then do another coat. So I'm gonna take the heat gun to this and dry it and then I'll keep painting so I won't come back and talk to you right away. We'll just fast forward all the way through it. Okay, so I'm mostly happy with this. I know that I have to darken up the tops of these a little bit. I'm going to take a smaller brush than I've been using to try and get a nice clean edge, but this down here is nice and dark. It needs a little bit more dark here. It needs a little bit more dark in here. And then, um, then I guess I'll put the tree in. Actually, I could probably start doing that now. Let's, let's move this over here. I want to get out my other piece that I had done earlier so that I have some kind of reference. Where am I going to put that? I'm going to put that right there. All right. Oh, this is always the hard part. <laughs> Draw a tree. All right, so it's going to need more than one coat. Oops, I can get rid of all of these little pieces of paper now. There will be branches and stuff in a minute there. I just, I need to think. <laughs> Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera off. Go, um, let this dry. I'll put a third coat on. You don't need to watch me do the third coat. There's not going to be much difference in it, and you won't be able to really tell the difference. So I will be doing a third coat, and then I'll come back and start doing some of the detail work. Okay, so I did the third coat on everything, including on this tree, which will probably be altered a little bit, but for now that's good. Um, and then I realized I want to do a transfer technique here with this, and then I realized it would be the wrong way, so I went and made another one the opposite way. The problem was is when I did the mirror image, it grayed the background, so I had to really fussy cut this one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to put this down. I'm actually going to put that down. Oh, I could lose my mind over this. Okay, so I need some gloss medium, and I'm going to use the Gidwellen. And I'm going to use a brush. Oh, I'll just use this. I'm just going to use another shader brush. And I need my credit card. Slash my Mod Podge wedge. One or the other. I'm probably not sure which one I'm going to use yet. So the tough part of this is, is I can't see. I know I want barrel here. And the thing is, is if it's not 
quite touching, I can come along with a little black and... All right. I've t said this before. These are the things that give me nightmares. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that out here. I'm not going to need much for this one. Take some of this. Smack it on here. Because that's where that gun's going to go. I'm not worried about the gloss medium being on because I am going to give everything a coat of gloss medium before. Well, after. Ah! Okay. So I want it to be here and there. Okay. Actually, I think it would be better if I just use my fingers. Actually, I think it would be better if I burnish this with the edge. I've never done such a small transfer before. <sighs> okay, so what I was saying before I almost lost my mind was is I'm not worried that you can see, you see, you can see the gloss over there. Because when I'm done everything, and after I've signed it, I'm actually going to give it a coat of gloss medium just to make the whole thing shine. Uh, because it would be, it's really hard when you have only part of a painting varnish like that. It just, it doesn't look great. So I'll just come back and I'll put a final coat on everything. So I have to let this dry before I can remove it with my transfer technique. So I will be back. Okay. This is, we're gonna, we're going to remove the paper backing from the transfer and I'm very scared. So we're just gonna dampen it. And I'm gonna very gently rub this. It had really minute detail. So this one might this one might lift some of that detail and then I would have to use my pit pen to fix it. I would prefer not to do that. Because as I said before, I I don't really draw fine detailed things like this. Again, I can draw. I just prefer not to draw. Ah, crap. See what happened there? Well, actually, you can't see anything right now, can you? That's as good as it's going to get. Oh, right there. I actually removed some of the butt of the gun. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to ignore it for right now and I'm going to think about it. Actually, you know what? Let me take one of these tiny brushes I was using before, clean that out. It's going to take a little bit of medium, gloss medium, a drop. I'm going to put a little bit. I'm going to re-adhere that. Adhere, adhere. We'll see what happens. I'll work on another part.
Okay, so as you can see, I was able to repair a little bit and then another bunch came off. So I'm going to just fix that with my pit pen. Um, I'm just going, I'm lucky because it's it's, there's straight lines there. And I have to add a little bit there at the back of the helmet and a little bit there at the stock and that's it. So that was nerve wracking. I'm going to go get my pit pen and my magnifying glasses because I think I'm going to need those. I think I'm going to need those. Just trying to decide if that's paper haze or not. I don't think so. Yeah, I'll go get my magnifying glasses and my pit pen. I'll be right back. Let's get out the old pit pen. My head in the way. Oh, a little bit. Oh, you can see my glasses. I'm going to use the brush tip, if I remember correctly, it lay down ink a little bit better. Okay. That looks, oh, let me put my regular glasses on so I can see the screen. That looks pretty good. I'm thinking I want to fill in the rest of the helmet because that small amount of detail I think is confusing to the eye when you're doing um, something this small. I'm just going to cover that up. There we go. Put a little dot right there. Put a little dot right there. Put like that. Some in there, a little trigger. I believe once I apply the gloss coat over everything, you won't be able to tell between the two different blacks. Of course, if I was smart, I would take one of my pens, not my pens, one of these paint brushes and some of this black paint, and I would uh, maybe apply some black paint. There we go. Let's take off the magnifying glasses, put on my regular glasses. I don't know, I think that looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. I gotta do that tree. I don't wanna do the tree. I have to do the tree. I've decided I'm not going to be putting the thank you sentiment um, for a really bizarre reason. Um, I tend to only put sentiments on my mixed media pieces. Oh, let me zoom out here so that you can see what it is that it looks like. There, it looks like that. Um, only because like when I took fine arts in school we, we we it's just not something that we did was put words in it and I'm still not comfortable 
putting words in my fine art, for lack of a better word, fine art pieces. Mixed media to me is a fine art. It's not considered a fine art traditionally, but well, traditionally mixed media has only been around for a few decades. I think they started doing that in the 50s or 60s. I could be completely wrong about that. I don't know that much about mixed media. I'm still fairly new to it. But I just don't feel right putting words on it. I don't know why. So what I think I'll do is I will call the piece thank you instead of putting thank you on it. So what I need to do now is I need to get some branches on this. need to get some branches on this and I'm just trying to figure out which angle would be easiest for me to do that and I'm thinking it's here. All right. Where's that rigger brush? Wet my rigger brush. So I had, oops, I had added some water to the leftover paint to make it nice and thin and inky. So basically, um, I'm rolling the rigger brush in it and then I roll it. Actually, you can't really see it now, let me. So you put the paint on the brush. And then what you do is you take it out and you roll it. So you take off a lot of the paint and you get, ugh, you couldn't see that, I was off camera. All right, <laughs> let me try that again. <laughs> Somewhere where you can see it. Oh God, I suck, all right. So put the paint on the rigger brush, take the rigger brush, pull and twist the rigger brush, and then it comes to a point like that, like that, nice thin point so that you can make nice thin lines. I want this one to be a little bit thicker because this is going to be a branch off the main branch. Then I want it to go like that, like that. The one good thing about doing branches is you don't have to be able to do it in a straight line. I know you're having a little bit of a problem seeing that. Actually, I'm, not, I'm having a little bit of a problem seeing it because the, the branches are so thin and it's still the first coat and the glossy background is interfering with it sticking. Like that. Again, I just wanted to put a semblance of the tree there. All right. Now. I'm just going to put that in water for a second and I want to take my fan brush and I want to load up with some of the wetness, the really wet stuff. Ugh. And I'm just going to, uh, ooh, no, I don't like that. See that beautiful glossy protective finish? <laughs> Okay, that, no, I don't want the, uh, the wet bit. I want some of the dry paint. Let's try that. So basically I'm just tapping the edge just to give a semblance of 
grass. And just pull that down so it merges in with the the rest when it dries. Okay. This is a dry paint. Is that cool? I don't know if I'll, I'll show you in a second. I'll, I'll pick it up and put it closer to the camera. There you go. See how you can see the light through it? So you just get these nice little, I'll turn it, see the nice little pieces of grass, which I think is so freaking cool. I love my fan brush. Just gonna add a little bit in here. And a little bit on this. I don't know if that's grass or a hill or. Uh, I think I'm going to leave that because that could be stone actually. Okay, that goes in. Where is that rigger brush? There it is. Back to the rigger brush. I'm going to put a little bit of paint on that. And then it's all about the details, right? So let's just, just put a few longer pieces of grass near the tombstones where they might not get as much um, custodial maintenance. And again, near this tree. I'm going to put a little bit more here. I'm not liking that. Um, again with the, the glare. No, I don't like that. I'm taking it away. Here we go. It's gone. I'll just use the end of the rigger brush to put that grass back in there. No, nope, don't like that either. Again, those protective gloss coats. Now let me tell you, saved me a lot of pain. Because I could get rid of things that really bugged me. No, nope, don't like that. Let me try that again. There we go. I'm calling it done and I'm calling it thank you. So I'm going to give it a couple minutes to dry and then we're going to put on some gloss medium and we're going to protect the whole thing. And that will be that. We'll be back. I forgot I wanted to sign this. So I used to sign with that really teensy weensy brush, this one here, like you can barely see it. And then I really screwed up the end and the end became all scruffy. And, uh, and I realized it was always really difficult for me to sign my name. And then I said, well, who says I had to sign it with a brush? So I went out and got an acrylic paint pen. 
I usually have black white and I got this yellow one and I'm going to sign this in yellow. Now you should always sign you shouldn't sign right at the corner you should sign up at least a quarter inch and a quarter inch so that if it gets framed your signature won't get cut off. And I'm signing it over here because there's more space here than there is on this side. I used to insist on always signing at one side and then one of my teachers told me I was nuts and he was right. <laughs> and let me... That's better. There we go. Oops. See? Don't frig, Andrea. Now you now you're gonna have to wipe that part off. Let's go like that. Remember what I told you about acrylic paint plasticizing? There you go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Plasticize so I can wipe it off. A lot and too much paint on there. There you go. I can live with that. Y'all probably think I'm nuts, but that's okay. I'm an artist. People expect me to be nuts. I'll let this dry, and then we'll come back and we'll slap on a coat of the uh, Liquitex gloss medium. And then we're done. <laughs> and we're, I don't know how many hours of this video is. Okay, we're at the end. Yay! I'm going to uh, put my final gloss medium varnish on with a foam brush to try and completely eliminate any brush stroke marks. And, um,. Lately I've been putting on too much varnish, so I just want to start out with a little bit here and I can always add some more. Add some down here. Make sure I'm getting the edges, coming back down, there we go, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to let that dry and that is it, we are done. If you liked this 17 hour video, please give it a thumbs up or press the subscribe button. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. I have to say this is one of my favorite pieces. I really like it a lot. I deeply and profoundly apologize that it took so long to get to this point. I hope you all learned something along with me. Have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye.